Hey everybody, I thought for this uh, little video of ours, let's keep it a little bit more casual, friendly, just you and me, uh, a screen monitor and, and the person who is watching it. Uh, let's be honest, I just wetted my hair because I had my headphones on it, had a weird shape in it. The balcony door is open, so you might hear a lot of extra noise, but hey, it's, it's, it's just the two of us, right? It's just the two of us. So let's see what we're talking about in this video. I'm thinking supplies, cheap drawing supplies, the basics where we start. And I do have videos like this before, but I keep on being asked what I used to draw with, especially this little fella here. So I thought, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about this a little bit more. So this pen is a fine liner from the store Hema, which is a Dutch company and it is a variety store. So you can buy all sorts of stuff there. So this is what you can buy at Hema. This is a two euro set and you get 12 fine liners in it. I keep on saying I always go for the cheapest possible solution and I'm not kidding you. So this is the thing that I'm using. You will not be able to find this on Amazon or buy this probably in your country, but you can go to your local variety uh, store and you can get yourself just the cheapest fine liners that you can find there and see if it works for you. And the other thing, of course, like now we have something to draw with, but where do we draw into? Like you can get yourself the nice sketchbooks. I like Sea White of Brighton because it's an all media. I can do some watercolors, but also ink washes and also markers in it, even though it sucks up the markers like crazy. Or you get yourself a Leuchtturm or a Moleskin, which, whichever you want to go for. It has 112 pages in it for 19 euros. It's quite expensive, no? Let me show you what I do instead. This here, normal, cheap, average as copy paper. That's it. This is, I think this was three euro 25 cents, but it has 500 pages for three euro 25 cents. There we go. This is what we're going to draw on. And take a couple of pages out. I drew on these all the time. I told the story several times. Good old communism, no money for sketchbooks. So my mom stole all the copy paper from her work. God bless her soul. And why that's also good now. So why I still like using paper like that is because I have the, the sickness that quite a couple of people have. And I understand, like you buy, like this was 13 euros. So you buy a big sketchbook for a lot of money. And obviously you only want to draw pretty stuff in it. You want to do the nicest drawings because this is your sketchbook and you want to show it off and you, you don't want to just scribble in it. And that's what I do with most of my sketchbooks. And every now and then I have the, the courage or, the, or I'm at the point like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to scribble in it. And I just don't feel so good about it. But when you just have a couple of pieces of A4 paper, you can start scribbling and you don't feel bad about it at all. So you can just do one drawing after the other. I don't care if I start here. I don't care if I have something there because I know it's a piece of paper and I just don't feel bad about really working with my ideas. Now, uh, I'm going to open this even though I still have this one, but there's a slight difference because this is already starting to lose some of its strength. So it's becoming, the lighter I touch it, it's becoming almost a little bit pencil-y. So you can do pencil -y stuff. Let me show you what a new one does. So also, I'm just trying to tell you, don't try to switch too quickly away from uh, the old versions, old versions, from, the, from your older pens that are slowly running out because they still have value. There we go, nice little cut there. And we're gonna take out one of these close this back up. So technically again, two euro, two divided by 12, you figure out how little, how few cents this costs. And um, this is the brand new one, and I'm gonna do some lines next to this one. I'm also just barely touching, but they're much stronger. So you sort of can, uh, you can combine these two pens, uh, what I like to do is outlines with a new one because then you have the nice crisp lines and you can do the shading with the old one and then you can also get a bit more uh, maybe not graphic effect but almost like pencil like effect you can see how how it nicely fades away so it's a, a, a good thing 
to uh, combine the two. And that's, that's it. That's all you need technically. Um, I can also touch just quickly on markers as well. These are usually all the markers that are used. I really have no brand loyalty. For me, it's all about price and quality and performance. And you shouldn't have brand loyalty either. The, the, the brands should do everything for your loyalty, but only if they deserve it. So returning here, everybody knows Copic. These are qualitatively the best, also most expensive ones that you can get. And there's hundreds of different markers. I got to know Touch while I was studying. I find them to be very good, relatively quite close to Copic. Same with the Pro markers. I, I, I like them, but they are definitely on the cheaper side. Style file I discovered not so long ago, just because I just wanted to buy something new and I saw these on the internet and they were relatively cheap and I like them so far. They are, so everything that's not Copic is like extra saturated and weird. I have videos on this, like you can, you can check it. I, I will link some in, in the description, but especially when you're learning, you really should go for the cheapest that you can get. Arteza is also in that cheap market for learning. It's, it's perfect for you. And I want to bring the special attention to twin markers. And twin markers are also got from a local supermarket. If you're European, maybe you have heard of Action. It's originally Dutch, if I remember correctly, but you can find them in Belgium, Germany, France, Austria, Poland, uh, Czech Republic, and also Italy. And this is like a super cheap store. And I think three of these costs a euro, or you can get a set of this like for four euros, if I remember correctly. Either way, really, uh, ridiculously um, low price. They're also not super high quality, but for example, this one has a couple of grays. So let me take this off. Sorry if that was super loud. Uh, let me zoom in. So we have a cool gray three, a cool gray six. This was a warm gray one and a cool gray eight. So the stupid thing with this is that you can't really choose and they sell you like set together sets like this. But still, you can you can use this. Like these are not really full anymore. I think I don't even know if I can use them. Let me just take them out, see if we can work with them. Either way, super cheap and it's perfectly enough, especially when you're learning. And later on, you can also buy the better ones once you know how to use them. All right, uh, let us draw something. One thing to keep in mind, uh, so these are super thin. If you want to use markers, you will have to have either an underlay one that you can keep and just keep on pushing between your, your papers. So if I have a new paper, I'm gonna take this one and put below it just so it don't hit through. Well, it doesn't hit through just because, let's see if I still have any juice in this one. Ah, look at this, it does. But I draw two lines. And you can already see a little dot there. You can't see it that well, but uh, if I would want to, let me take the thick part. If I would want to color this part in here, you can see that it's a little bit, <laughs> it's running dry. So let's say I want this part a bit like that. You can already see this will hit through. So that's why it's always good to have like an extra piece of paper there. And then the rest is, is, is up to you. Uh, let's say we want to draw a robot. So I'm just going to do a couple of thumbnails for robots. So something that I did forget to talk about is white pen gels or, or whatever you want to draw white with. Uh, there are different sort of brands. I, I really don't know what your local uh, place has to show you. I usually like the Molotovs. They are a bit more expensive, but they are good. Otherwise, I also really like jelly rolls. Like these are relatively cheap and they do quite a good job. Uh, I 
I think I bought these two and I thought, ah, this is fancy. This is going to be better. This was the more expensive one and it's the worst one. So it's, uh, it's not really working. It dried up very quickly and this one is working like a charm. So that's why I'm saying don't think that just because something is cheaper doesn't make it worse. That's the, the, the takeaway here. Uh, as you can see, I sketched a couple of ideas. It also hit through. So once again, keep this in mind. And yeah, I just really don't feel bad about sketching this out. I Maybe I wouldn't want to have... In a sketchbook, I wouldn't mind these, but I feel like it's a waste to, to showcase off and just to try off stuff, uh, try out stuff like this, just lines in a sketchbook. I find that to be a waste. So yeah, that's why I like to keep these sort of copy papers. Maybe not the most environmentally friendly, but I'll make sure to always throw them away at least into the paper trash so it hopefully can get recycled and uh, with that I guess I'm just gonna take this or this I like these two or maybe I'll try and combine them and I'll end the video with that just have a rough little sketch and uh, just so you guys can see what you can do with the cheapest of uh, resources what I didn't mention here because you could see it in my previous video is using pencil it's obviously an option as well. I just like using fine liners because of the industrial design look, but I also am more comfortable with fine liners now at this point than with pencils. Also, the markers are not necessary here either, but they go with the same industrial design style that I like that usually consists of marker and fine liners. As for this robot drawing, at the end I'm going to speed it up a bit. Well, you already see me speeding it up since this video uh, was not about the robot drawing, uh, but keeping drawing costs low. So yeah, this whole video was just uh, a reminder that it is really not about the tools that you are using, but about how you are using whatever tools you have at your disposal. And also don't ever let yourself be stopped from not having fancy tools and sketchbooks and digital drawing platforms. You just need to draw and put in the work no matter what the tools are. I do hope I managed to convince you to just draw and have fun and with that I will stop rambling and let you finish watching the robot sketching part of uh, the video. I'm really curious though what you guys are using for sketching now and also what you grew up with, like what did you draw it with when uh, you were a kid and what did you draw in as well. So yeah, leave me a comment down below, I'm very curious. I do hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more content like this and you can also follow me on Instagram for regular drawing updates. Or if you want to support me, take a look at the Gumroad and other links in the description down below. And as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye!